Ah, yes. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Veterans Minimum. I'm your host, Nick Day. It's at the Lamb Shows. You can find me. My guy, A-Double. What up? August is here. Train camp is here. Headlines every 15 minutes. Yep. People freaking out over little things. <laughs> Not in my case. Co- coaches <laughs> treating players like it's high school. I don't know, but it's August. <laughs> Oh, it's an AFC South preview, but we all record this on a Tuesday, August 3rd to be exact. And uh, the Giants were in the headlines a lot today. I want to know what the fuck I did to deserve this. But it's not just you. It's a, the Giants got one of the biggest fan bases. Oh, man. Yo, it is. They are such a f- like. It has been a nightmare, bro, since they won the Super Bowl. And I know. I'm complaining about them winning a Super Bowl. I get it. It's right? a decade now. Or about to be a decade. Yeah. This year, it'll be a decade oh, since man. that 2011 season. Eli Manning is getting inducted into the Ring of Honor. Oh, that's, Congrats. That's just Easy E, my guy. But, man, it has been a disaster since. I've went on record so many times talking about the first-round picks that have not re-signed. Uh-huh. Or we re-signed them to big money. We pay the first year of the contract, then we trade them away. JPP, Odell, the same thing. Mm-hmm. I believe the first year that Cleveland got Odell, the Giants paid like, I think Cleveland that first year paid like $600,000 because the Giants paid the rest of that. So you have that. You have the uh, Eli Apple departure. You have fucking DeAndre Baker gets felony gun charges. He gets Eric cut. Eric Flowers being Eric Flowers. Uh I tried to forget about him. Evan Ingram can't catch a pass on third down. The Daniel Jones saga. It's just, you know, four head coaches in in the last seven years. It's just been so bad. And today, today, first day of pads and camp, a brawl breaks out. Joe Judge is treating the team like a high school football team. Uh, We were supposed to save this for the other pod, so you'll probably hear this twice. But I can't. I can't do this. Yeah. Because we want Daniel to- Jones, the starting quarterback, at the bottom of the fucking pile, too. Hey, he's used to be at the bottom of the pile, considering how many times he's fumbled over the past two seasons. So he, you know, he's getting ready, all warmed up to. Oh, we didn't even mention Galladay pulls a hamstring, the same hamstring that kept him out for See, like. Yeah, I really like Kenny Galladay. So that bumps me out. <laughs> it's uh, anyway. You know, we're we're doing the AFC South preview, and <laughs> you're really upset about the Giants, but I bet Colt fans are feeling even worse right now. You want to talk about a franchise that already seems to be cursed. They lose their, I'm not going to say franchise quarterback, but hopefully improved quarterback. And then you're all pro left guard from what seems to be 5 to 12 weeks, which I never heard before. I never heard an injury injury be described as 5 to 12 weeks. That is a long time period. Yeah. So So, one month to three months. It's just, it's weird. Yeah. Five, usually hear like 6 to 12. Or 8 to 12. Yeah, 8 to 12. 4 to 6 is yeah, very common, I don't know anything too. about this 5 to 12. It doesn't make any sense. And when it comes to foot surgery, too, I have a hard time believing five weeks for foot surgery. So, But anyway, yeah, as much as you're upset about the Giants, I think right now the most outraged franchise has to be, or outraged fan base has to be Colt fans because season preseason hasn't even started and they're already scrambling. What about Texans fans? They've been hopeless for over a year. Right, but does anyone know what's happening with Watson? No. I don't think the NFL knows what's happening with Watson. NFL doesn't know. Team doesn't know. Uh, reporters don't know. Fans, no one knows. No, no one knows, right? The Houston Texans, right now, as we speak, have a four-win total. A four-win total in a 16-game season, Allen, is historically low. Mm-hmm. There's 17 games this year. If you look at the roster, pretty understandable. <laughs> to me, despite how bad that roster is, that is a big indication that Watson's not going to play this year. Mm. I think Watson is in that category of a guy who, him alone, I think you mentioned it on a recent pod, or it might have been it might have been when we were at the bar the other night about Russell Wilson alone being good for two to three wins a year that no other quarterback can get. Right. right? Like he's 
I might have not put that worded that correctly, but he's a quarterback that pulls games out of his ass that a lot of other quarterbacks don't. Mm -hmm. So where the Seahawks end up being an 11 win team, they really should be an eight win team, but they got that rust factor that allows them to get those two to three extra wins. I think Watson, Mahomes, Rogers, and we're talking about the cream of the crop. Because of their playmaking, yeah. I do. I would even throw Lamar Jackson in there too. Yeah. You know what's crazy though about Watson? I, I'm not trying to take away anything from him because he's obviously he's a phenomenal talent. It seemed like games last year. It wasn't because of him. Like I think he kept Houston competitive. I think they lost a lot of one score games last year, and he was a big reason why. But it seemed like on those final possessions, particularly games against the Colts, I remember Titans, like they. He, crazy fumble would happen interception or something botched would happen like the texans lost a decent amount of close games last year and i think a large part became it was because of deshaun watson's performances but that's why i'm not sure if i'm playing on the rust level yet because i don't think he's necessarily won houston games but it's not really indictment on him that's more indictment on how bad the roster is but it's just to me houston's been hopeless ever since they traded new copkins like that new copkins trade will forever be one of the worst moves and I just I don't know how fans have been optimistic since because like you know, look what happened with the whole Bill O'Brien saga and then they couldn't get head coach like I had no idea I was looking today Lovey Smith's their defensive coordinator I that might be the most low key hire I think I've ever seen yeah remember uh, last year when Will Fuller got popped for PEDs it turned out that Brian Cushing was like the strength and conditioning coach like, like how like you're talking about the poster boy for PED usage like come on yo they lost eight games by one score or less that's what I'm saying I'm like dude they had a lot of close games last year yeah and I'm, not, I'm like I said I don't want to put the, some of those close losses on Watson even because I think some of them were freak turnovers but it's like you look at their roster. It certainly wasn't defense keeping them in games. It was because Watson was throwing 300 and throwing two or three touchdowns a game. Bro, it's – man, I'm such a big fan of his. Like, I'm talking about the football player here too. Like, the football player, he's fantastic. I, I really think that if I had an open draft to build a franchise for the next five to ten years, after Mahomes, I'm probably taking him. Yeah, Probably. I think it's up there. I want to see how Herbert progresses. I want to see how Allen progresses. Right, right, I think right, right now, right. finished product, you have to put Watson there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I thought, la- you know, last year, I just say, you know, twice in like mm-hmm. four seconds, but Watson had an amazing statistical season, his best ever. And he lost his number one wide receiver, who he had tremendous fucking chemistry with. Mm-hmm. I remember talking to Maldo. Shout out Maldo, man. He's a fan of VM for a very long time now. And I believe it was either in a DM or in a Twitch stream how, you know, I like to go to fan bases because I don't know exactly everything that's happening in Denver or in Houston Mm -hmm. or Cleveland. So I like talking to, to fans sometimes that are rational because you can learn a lot about those right. teams. Like, I always come to you when it comes to anything NFC South right. and with the Falcons. The famous story when we show up to the pool in PA and I'm like, yo, Falcons, <laughs> NFC title game. You're like, well, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. Let me yeah, have a drink and, first. And someone <laughs> gave me a cup of gummy bears. I don't know what they put in those gummy bears. But even then, I was still level-headed <laughs> enough to realize, no, the Falcons will not be very good this year. <laughs> so, so I'm talking to Maldo and he was like, dude, what you said on the pod about Hopkins was absolutely right. Yeah. Watson and Hopkins would do Chevy commercials, you know, those local commercials together. Mm-hmm. And they would do Dunkin' Donuts and all this other shit. And there were never any reports of Hopkins complaining about the ball. There being a rift between the two of them. And you get rid of that, dude. They were the kings. They were fantastic. Yeah. That connection was... You finally got to see Hopkins perform at a level that we all knew he could get to when he finally had a quarterback. So you get rid of that guy. O'Brien gets fired halfway through the season. Not even halfway through no, the season. No, they're 0-4 and he got yeah, fired. Yeah, real quick, they yeah. let him go. They're like, enough's enough of this. And this dude put up a monster season. He loses Wolf Fuller. He has uh, Randall Cobb, right? He has yeah. uh, Brandon Cooks, who was always a concussion away from probably retiring. Wiley had a very good year. Very good yeah, year. Quietly. Very good year because he stayed healthy. Yeah, nobody watched it, but he, he put up numbers. So you look at all these things that Watson dealt with, and he was always in shootouts, right? 42-36, 27-25, 41-25, 31-24. These are shootouts that he's in. And he's able to keep the games close. Eight games decided. They lost all eight. 
book by one possession or less. Now I'm looking at a quarterback like that and how much shit is around him. And he still put up a career season. That's why I say outside of Mahomes, that's the guy that I would pick. Right. He's a 2020 this decade kind of QB. Absolutely. And he's very durable. Outside yeah. of that 2017. And he's which and, which he got hurt yeah, in practice. At practice yeah. Right? And, this isn't an injury that he picked up because yeah. you know he's he's very smart and he avoids big hits. Mm-hmm. He always slides, runs out yeah. of bounds, the whole nine. And Houston's notorious for having bad offensive lines. Like that pass bro is usually pretty Low average. Well, so. from from day one, didn't yeah. David Carr get sacked like eighty five times or some shit? <laughs> hey, hey, they had a couple good years where Aaron Foster was running. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shab, Atlanta's yeah. finest. Man, good old Matt Shab. But uh, yeah, just uh, I think if you want to look, like, cause I remember when we were doing preview policy, like the most hopeless team in the NFL last year. I thought it was the Jets. I think this year it's the Texans. I can't find anything to be excited about with them. Because because to me. Well, it's it, it's inevitable Watson's going to get suspended. Like, I remember when the whole Greg Hardy saga was happening. He played one game, and then they suspended him for the rest of the season after that. Yeah. Now, do you think he gets traded or suspended first? Oh, absolutely suspended. No team straight. Think about all the draft capital you have to go up for a guy who you don't know how much time he's going to miss. You don't know what the ramifications and consequences of this is going to be. Yeah, if you... If you look at what Stafford went for, mm-hmm. Watson is probably five first round yeah. picks and players. And you look you look at the organizations I'd be interested in, Miami, Philadelphia, they're very savvy when it comes to trades. I don't think they're gonna pull the trigger that quickly. You know, both organizations, okay, they're not they've made their mistakes, but for most of I think both of them uh they kinda know how to wheel and deal when it comes to trades. Yo, there is a better chance that the New York Jets win the Super Bowl than the Texans do to have the most regular season wins in the NFL. (laughs) And also, there's better odds that the Chiefs win the Super Bowl than the Texans to finish with the worst record in the NFL. Shit show. Yeah. Really bad. Now... Do you, would you, if you're a GM, with the uncertainty, mm-hmm. would you make a move to acquire Deshaun Watson? Absolutely not. Too much baggage. No, you just don't know what's going to be like. How long is like, how long is he be gone? Like, how much time do you have to wait? And remember how many how many first round picks you have to give up? It's just too risky. I need I need more information. I need if I'm going to make a move for Watson, I need to know that. First of all, I need to know. What's good with these allegations? Like he's got twenty four civil cases against yeah. them. We're talking civil, like yeah, uh, <laughs> twenty four is crazy. Yeah, twenty four is crazy enough. But then we're talking about actual civil case, like it, w- one one is crazy. One's crazy, but right when you're the the, the, the king of the franchise, the franchise tw- yeah. twenty four is. <laughs>